Hello everyone, and welcome back to Games in the Attic's Sonic 30th Anniversary Special, Part 2. I'm your host, The Tominator, and thanks for tuning in. Now, in the last episode, I mentioned how Sonic Adventure for the Sega Dreamcast was the last Sonic game I ever played. So, I decided to play through the Sonic Advance trilogy for the Game Boy Advance, which left me wondering what handheld Sonic games came next. So let's wrap up this Sonic 30th Anniversary Special and take a look at the Sonic Rush games for the Nintendo DS. Sonic Rush, dubbed the best Sonic game ever by the official Nintendo magazine, released in 2005 for Nintendo's brand spanking new Game Boy, the Nintendo DS. A revolutionary new handheld that let you shrink men's penises, fling poop back up a dog's arse, and make airline pilots projectile vomit over each other. Touch me. Sign this, and I'll think about it. The name bugs me a bit. Sonic Rush. I mean, isn't Sonic already fast enough? The cartoon already stated he's the fastest thing alive, and if you're asking the fastest thing alive to rush, then you, you gotta lower your standards a little. But I was pleasantly surprised, at first, at how much more polished and refined this game is compared to Sonic Advance 3, and it really feels like a next-gen leap. And in the earlier stages, I was definitely having way more fun than I'd had with any of the Advance games. The new gameplay mechanics Sonic Team added to the Sonic formula really do work and make for a better Sonic experience overall. You can now perform tricks while Sonic is in the air or grinding, which charges the new tension gauge and allows Sonic to super boost or rush, I guess. This is the main gameplay hook and is satisfying to do and easy to pull off. Sonic Rush also keeps the air attack and double jump from the advanced games, as well as standard moves like the spin dash, which you'll hardly ever use in this game because of the new super boost. Now, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. Sonic Rush goes downhill fast. While feeling like the fastest a Sonic game has ever been, in the beginning at least, rarely ever feels overwhelming. The first few stages feel like they've been built around how Sonic plays, as opposed to making Sonic go really fast and have the levels try and keep up with him. This is good. But getting Sonic is back, glad Sonic Team kept the troll that keeps putting in this shit. I mean, honestly, some of the enemy placement in this game is just so stupid. Why? Why put that there? Was I having too much fun, Sonic Team? And the further you get in the game, the worse it becomes. The level design reverts back to Sonic Advance 3 levels of confusion with an added dash of extra screen. The main thing that annoys me with Sonic Rush is when the game starts ping-ponging you around, right side up and upside down, top screen to bottom screen, and having the left and right directional buttons reverse on you constantly. So you'll be pressing right, making Sonic go forward, then you'll go upside down, hit a spring, and suddenly, forwards is now backwards, which makes Sonic stop, causing you to fall upwards. Yes, that's right, fall upwards into a ceiling full of spikes. And this theme from good to bad carries on throughout the entire game. But let's get into the story first, shall we? After the first two stages, you meet Robotnik, or as the kids call him, Eggman. And as always, he has something up his sleeve. After beating Robotnik, this purple cat girl shows up called Blaze, who is tracking down Robotnik, trying to get back the soul emeralds he's stolen. She doesn't tell Sonic any of this, and just pisses off, leaving Sonic wondering WTF just happened. The next boss battle, Sonic's like, you won't escape this time, Eggman, and Robotnik responds with, you taunt me by not using my full title. <laughs> And I'm like, finally, we're going to address this whole Eggman Robotnik fiasco. He then reveals he's not Eggman at all, and is a completely different person. With a fucked up name. I'm not going anywhere near that. Hot potato, hot potato. Let's just call him Robotnik 2. Tails then finds out there's a problem with the space-time continuum, because why wouldn't there be? And as it turns out, Blaze and Robotnik 2 are from another dimension, and the two Robotniks are working together to collect both Chaos and Soul Emeralds. The Soul Emeralds being the other dimension's version of the Chaos Emeralds. Knuckles hits a rock, and Sonic and Blaze come to blows while Tails watches with sick pleasure. They almost immediately resolve their differences and team up to take down the Robotniks. Blaze is the only other playable character in the game, and is unlocked after her first encounter with Sonic. Playing as Blaze has you play through the same stages again in a different order collecting the Soul Emeralds from Robotnik. So Blaze fights Robotnik 1 and Sonic fights Robotnik 2, but the boss battles remain the same and after completing the game as Sonic I just didn't have it in me to do the same shit again with Blaze. Now continuing with the good to bad theme, you collect the Chaos Emeralds by first having enough charge in your tension gauge then jumping onto what the game calls a special generator and boosting until you shoot through a portal and into the special stage. One's at the ready. The special stages in Sonic Rush play exactly like the ones from Sonic 2, except this time you look like a businessman from the 90s checking his emails on his Palm Pilot. 
You use the pen to move Sonic around the half pipe and try to collect enough rings to earn that particular zone's Chaos Emerald, with each zone's special stage becoming more and more difficult. And at first, I didn't mind the bonus stages, they were easy to get to and provided a nice break from the main game. But after Chaos Emerald 4, they just become sadistic and require a lot more precision than this is capable of. Same goes for the boss fights. I love the 2.5D style and they must have seemed amazing at the time. Okay, I still have no idea how to dodge some of the attacks, but overall, they're far more enjoyable than anything from the advanced games. That's until they get relentlessly difficult and make you want to jab the DS stylus into your own eyeball. And the final boss was way harder than anything I've experienced in any Sonic game I've played before. I tell you, no eight year old is beating this bastard in a hurry. And this isn't even the true final boss. But to reach the true final boss, you have to collect all the soul emeralds and chaos emeralds, which I couldn't fucking do. What's sad is the game's nearly there. It nearly is one of the greatest Sonic games ever made. Up until the first three zones, you're having a blast. Then the difficulty spike comes along and ruins everything. All of a sudden you can't collect the emeralds, poor level design leads to unfair deaths, and the later bosses will make you rage quit. And the difficulty spike seems like it was just put there to stop players completing it too quickly, and as a result makes the second half of the game a complete grind. The game ends with all the Sonic gang rejoicing, and Sonic is chased away by the sex pest that is Amy. And it's on to Sonic Rush Adventure. There's a lot riding on you. This is Sonic's 30th birthday. Don't fuck this up for me. And already the music's put me in a far better mood. The game starts out with Sonic and Tails crashing into a hurricane out at sea. They then get washed up on a strange desert island where they're awoken by Marine the Raccoon, who is, judging by the dialogue, 100% Australian. And she joins Sonic and Tails as a chirpy, yet completely incompetent sidekick. Her boat breaks down and Sonic and Tails offer to build her a new one. Marine then tells you the materials that are required to fix her boat. You then play through a short tutorial where you acquire the materials needed, but Tails builds a jet ski instead. <laughs> Marine tells you there's another island off to the west, Tails teaches you how to draw a straight line, and maybe, just maybe, we might actually get to do something in a minute. But first, we have another tutorial. Tails explains how to steer the jet ski and do tricks with the pen and how to boost using the L or R buttons. We have a few more lines of dialogue and after, no joke, 20 minutes, we're finally playing a proper level. And it's fantastic, way better than the first game in every way. Except for the Sky Babylon levels, I enjoyed it start to finish. Each main island consists of two levels and a boss, where you're rewarded materials after each stage. The higher grade you get, the more materials you'll receive. Chart your course to the next island, collect more materials, give those materials to Taos, who crafts better vehicles like ships, hovercrafts and submarines, which will allow you to explore more of the map. And all come with their own touchscreen minigames you have to play while you travel. They're pretty monotonous, but not completely horrible. And while all this might seem like padding, it does at least feel like you're on an adventure. Well, well would you look at that? You then come across these robot pirates in the middle of stealing a jeweled scepter, whatever the fuck that is. Blaze then drops in out of nowhere to stop them. After another really fun boss fight, Blaze explains that it's actually Sonic and Tails who are in the wrong universe. Deciding something is clearly amiss, Blaze joins the crew. After some more exploring, material collecting, and the best Sonic gameplay I've experienced on a handheld system to date, you catch up with the robot pirates one last time for a final battle. While not that difficult, it's plenty hard enough for the game's target demographic, kids. So you beat the pirates, retrieve the jeweled scepter, and the credits roll. But guess what I was able to do this time around? Guess what I wanted to do this time around? I collected all the soul and chaos emeralds. You collect the chaos emeralds by racing some bloke called Johnny, I'm not joking, Hi, babe. whose seven different locations are dotted around the map and you collect the soul emeralds by discovering hidden islands and replaying missions as Blaze through an easy mission select menu screen. I completed enough missions to earn my island a coconut tree and a dinosaur. Sometimes it's the little things. Getting the soul emeralds was a piece of cake, but the Johnny jet ski races are way too hard and don't allow for a single fucking error. But guess what you can do if you fail to collect the emerald? You can instantly replay the bonus stage. Fucking wow. And it only took Sega 16 years to implement that feature. And that's why Sonic Rush Adventure is one of the best Sonic games I've ever played. It covers as many angles as it can, so it's the least annoying it can be. 
very, very rarely are there any what the fuck moments. Apart from the Sky Babylon stages, seriously, fuck this part, it's like someone walked into the Sonic team office and said, hey, let's make Sonic Rush again, but this time, let's make it actually good. So, I collected all the emeralds and unlocked the true final boss. And surprise, surprise, it's the Robotniks. Sonic and Blaze then use the power of the emeralds to turn Super Sonic. One pretty easy but enjoyable boss fight later, with a couple of cool cutscenes thrown in for good measure, all is well in the two universes again. Tails builds a pink, dimension travelling boat plane and they fly off into the sky like Danny and Sandy at the end of Greece. So that wraps up my Sonic 30th Anniversary Special, and I'm glad it got to end on a good note. Forget Sonic Rush, but if you have a DS lying around, then Sonic Rush Adventure is worth a go. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Games in the Attic.